rock slider. Yeah, let me go. I'm Dan Edmonds and this is the 2023 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 and I'm really excited to see what it's made of because they've made some incredible changes that were really necessary I think compared to the last model and we're out here in the Nevada desert running the Vegas Torino race course and I can't think of a better place to see how the ZR2 uh, holds up to some, uh, I predict a little bit of abuse. Uh, it should be fun. So yeah, let's see how this, uh, this, this machine does. So you're out here in the desert, you're not quite sure where the roads are going or when the last rainstorm washed out a section of it. So you need suspension travel uh, and you need articulation to be able to deal, pick your way through the slow spots that have been damaged by weather. But then when the road opens up and you wanna make time, suspension travel and really good shocks and big tires help you get over most of the uh, the uneven terrain and you can really keep your foot down. I mean, desert racing through terrain like this is the inspiration for trucks like the ZR2, the Raptor, the Ram 1500 TRX. You just need the suspension travel and the shocks that can reject heat because there's just a lot of a lot of shock motion on these trucks. It's nothing like, you know, sand dunes are, are no big deal. Uh, you need power, you need traction, but you don't need the shocks necessarily the way you need them out here. And rock crawling is a low speed exercise that's really more about clearance and articulation. But the, the formula that the ZR2 is built on is based on, you know, just hauling ass through the desert. This truck does it really well. Compared to the last generation truck, we have 33 inch tires instead of 31, so we can roll over terrain that the other one might have to slow down for. Uh, the shocks have always been a strong point of this truck, but they've given it more travel so that if we encounter you know, deeper uh, ditches or whatever, we can just kind of barrel through it rather than bottom out. You know, this, this uh, 2.7 liter um, engine and its eight speed trans transmission, it's a really nice combination, you know, especially here in Baja mode where traction control is turned off and you can kind of let the tail hang out a little bit. It's really nice and controllable. The engine, I thought that a 2.7 liter turbo four would not sound that great, but actually when you're on the gas, it sounds really cool. Uh, not V8 cool but certainly uh, it sounds like it's doing some work. So we've just had to turn around because this winter has left a lot of snow in the mountains and we're not even close to the summit of this pass and the lead vehicle has gotten stuck and they're digging it out right now. 
and he wasn't even in sight of the top and we don't even know the snow accumulation on the other side which has a different sun exposure it might be deeper over there so we're going to turn around and find another way out and you know if your truck is ready for anything well deep snow can still stop you and we're going to go on some unknown roads and uh this package should have no problem with those once we get down below the snow line. There's a horse on the highway We don't know his name He's never been on a We had two flats at once. We haven't had any tire problems at all. And then we get to this rock garden and uh, we were in a little bit of a hurry to catch up. And I thought I was seeing the sharp ones, but obviously the sharp ones were seeing me. So the new ZR2 has a lot of differences. Some of them are shared with the regular Colorado that help make the ZR2 a better ZR2. A lot of it starts here up at the front. Um, you know, in a styling sense, there's a subtle angle to the front of the hood here, which actually improves visibility from the driver's seat. There's also channelized kind of a styling to the hood that also gives you better glimpses of the trail. But the big change, the biggest change on the whole truck perhaps, well, maybe the second, is right in here, they've extended the wheelbase three inches by pushing the front axle forward. And what that's done, you know, the truck isn't really any longer, so that reduces the front overhang for clearance when you approach an obstacle. But the bigger thing is they've moved the tire further away from the body mount which allowed them to upgrade from 31 inch tires to these 33 inch tires. Also, they've reconfigured the, the Multimatic dampers. These two chambers are now on either side of the shock. I mean, the shocks don't care how that's arranged. Uh, this is a cast iron lower arm in the ZR2, as opposed to the two piece welded ones that are on the other models in the new Colorado lineup. You can see an aluminum knuckle, and then over here, you can see how the stabilizer bar link attaches directly to the knuckle. So unlike last year, this has a one-to-one -one motion ratio for the stabilizer bar. Before, it mounted to a link that was somewhere on the lower arm, and we don't see that here anymore. So, yeah, some meaningful differences up front here. The front end of the ZR2 is unique. Uh, it's sculpted to give it even more approach angle than the other members of the Colorado family, especially right here in front of the tires where it's really dramatically cut away. Uh, of course, it's got skid plates. Uh, the skid plates are aluminum in the front. There's one under the radiator and another one underneath steering gear and they blend together. And then further back, there's a steel one at the transfer case. Uh, there's also these red tow hooks, which are really prominent, a pair of those up front. Uh, and these fog lights here that are embedded into the fascia. In the back, there's no tow hooks, but there's a standard tow hitch, and you can install a clevis into the receiver and use that as a recovery point. Here along the side, we've got rock rails that are standard. There's an accessory that can put a little step on there for easy entry if you want that. And of course, the styling is nicely chiseled and really athletic. You know, the body sculpting is the same on the Z71 as it is on the ZR2, but these fender flares are wider uh, on the ZR2 and the Trail Boss because the track width of those two trucks is about three and a half inches wider than it is on a Z71 and the rest of them. So the rear of the ZR2 has a lot of welcome changes. 
One of the first ones is the spare tire here is tucked up about two inches higher because there's no longer a diesel or a def tank. They can push the tire up, improves the departure angle. The bigger thing is the shocks here. They're mounted outboard of leaf springs instead of inboard, tight up against the wheel and tire. So that means there is no obstacle between the shock and the pumpkin, unlike last year. So that's a huge difference. In the past, the ZR2, one of the criticisms was that the, the rear shocks were kind of hanging down in the middle, unprotected between the springs and the, the pumpkin. And so when you were on the trail and you were navigating rocks, you had to worry about three things underneath there, not just the diff. And then the other thing is they've increased the suspension travel. Uh, about an inch more than the last ZR2 in the front and about two inches more back here. That should really help with articulation and it's also helping on a lot of the whoops and other wavy pavement that we've been uh, navigating because I don't think we've bottomed out once. So a ZR2 doesn't quite tow as much as a regular Colorado Z71. That number is 7,700. But this number, uh, this truck will tow 6,000 pounds, which is up from 5,000 last year. Now there is an exception. They have a Desert Boss with a lot of accessories on it, and that version has a lower tow rating of 5,500 pounds because of the weight of all that stuff. Now this doesn't just have the standard tow hitch. It's got four pin and seven pin uh, plugs built right in and on the dash there's an electronic trailer brake controller right above the driver's left knee. Yeah so right now the main thing that's preventing me from uh, going any faster is just dust. So yeah this is this is great I mean just hanging the tail out in the corners uh, you know, it's got good brakes, you know, in Baja mode with a stability control off. You also get uh, downshifting that happens, you know, under braking. So it's always in the right gear when you get on the gas again. And also I think eight speeds is the right number. I think 10, I don't know, I've never seen the advantage there. Maybe it's a fuel economy thing for other people that use that. So I'm in Baja mode right now, which is one of three off-road driving modes. The other one is off-road and the other one's terrain which is more for low speed uh, work and Baja mode gives you a more aggressive shifting and disables the stability control so you can hang the tail out like I just did there and uh, yeah this suspension travel the extra travel and bigger tires are just letting me maintain my pace through uh, stuff I might have slowed down for with last uh, year's truck. The ZR2 is powered by a 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder like all other members of the Colorado family. But this is the HO, the high output version, which makes 310 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. That's more horsepower than last year's V6 and more torque than the diesel they used to have in this truck. So that's pretty impressive. Now the difference mechanically between the Z71 and this is pretty much it's the same engine, it's just a different flash. The Z71 is 310 horsepower and 391 pound-feet of torque. The HO bumps that up to 430. And of course, you know, you might have noticed the flow tie here. I kind of like that. <laughs> After driving this all day yesterday and now into today, um, it's like this is a much better truck than it was before. I think the last Colorado and that kind of extended into the ZR2 just felt like they hadn't quite nailed the concept yet. It still felt like this is a smaller pickup truck, but we're not really leveraging its uh, tidier dimensions to make it a real good off-road vehicle. I mean, they definitely did some some great things, but you know, I think the last one was a little bit, you know, it was a good effort, but I think the truck on which it was based didn't quite have what it took to make the Colorado VR2. And I think the Colorado itself has changed in numerous ways that make 
the, the ZR2 version that much more fully realized. So right now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing much I don't like here. Our time out here in the desert with the new Colorado ZR2 has been epic. I mean, the terrain is great to look at. It's awesome to drive over. And this truck is really set up to do that really well. Frankly, most of the gripes are inside. You know, the overall ZR2 theme is really nice looking, but if you look close, you see some pretty hard, pebbly plastic on the dash and the door panels. Uh, I also wish they had more upfitter switches, so if you wanted to add a light bar or cow lights, you'd be able to control those and not have to hack into the wire harness to do it. Also, there's a couple of weird quirks about the infotainment system, which is generally excellent, uh, but that's like they've taken some of the controls you'd normally have close at hand and stuck them in the touchscreen, and I mean the trip computer reset and the headlight switch. And, you know, that's a little bit odd. You'd get used to it, but uh, not ideal. But the actual driving part, it's amazing. It uh, just glides over rough roads. It, uh, there's lots of suspension travel. The 33s definitely make a big difference over last year's 31s. Uh, this is a much better ZR2 than they've made in the past. And it's a huge differ a difference. I was kind of indifferent to the last one, but I really like this one. This, to me, is the new king of the hill. And I think the new Tacoma really is going to have to be something special to outdo this. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to see when that one comes out. But they've got some uh, catching up to do all of a sudden. <laughs>